Hello and welcome to another GK Icon Academy's Coaches Panel Discussion. Today we are focusing on one of the five elements of development for a goalkeeper and we're going to focus on tactical awareness. Today we are very, very fortunate to have with us two of Penn State's best and I'm going to first introduce, if I may, Coach Mark Duffield. Coach Mark is the head coach of the, <clears throat> excuse me, of the Penn State New Kensington men's soccer team. He is also your goalkeeper coach in the NPSL with the Pittsburgh Hotspurs. He, within the ODP ranks, has been with PA West for five to six years, I believe, and in 2018 was voted the goalkeeper coach of the year by his peers. In 2020, Mark joined the Region East goalkeeper coaching staff, and he is a director of goalkeeping at a local club here in Pittsburgh. Mark, welcome, sir. Hey, how's it going? Good. Good to have you, sir. Good to have you. Good to and be well, here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm excited. I'm very excited. And not to put shadow over Mark Duffield, but because that is never the case. We have also have Tim Wassel with us. I'm very excited, Tim. Thank you for joining us. For those that don't know, Tim is the assistant coach and goalkeeper coach for the Penn State Maine Women's Soccer Program. Um, I literally could list the accolades and the season ranks that Penn State has had from a national ranking for the last 10 years since Tim's been there. We'd be here all day. Um, Tim has coached numerous All-Americans. He has coached women that have gone into the pro ranks in the NWSL and has coached women who have even played and represented the United States at the national team level. Previously to Penn State, Maine, he was with Penn State Altoona, where he was the 2008 NSCAA Great Lakes Regional Coach of the Year in 2008 and 2007. He was the Allegheny Mountain Collegiate Conference Coach of the Year, and he is on the United Soccer Coaches National Goalkeeper Staff. It is with great pleasure that I introduce Coach Tim Wassel. Tim, how you doing, sir? Doing great. Thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah, I'm very excited to have both of you here, so I, I do appreciate it. Let's get right into it as we start our sessions. We always say that. Tim, I'm going to direct the first question at you. Um, can, we, can you do me a favor? Can you define, at a 10,000-foot level, tactical awareness? Yeah, I, I think it's the role of the individual. You know, I, I think you kind of talk about it in any position, but the goalkeeper specifically in our discussions of how they can identify and decide – how they can best aid their team in the specific stage of the game. So when I say stage of the game, that can mean the phase of the game, you know, and kind of the, the way that I think you guys talk about the four phases of the game, but also the moment of the game, right? So is it the 75th minute and we're up one nil, or is it 75th minute and we're down one nil? Um, so I think there's a, a lot of implications that, that kind of go into that. I, and I, I love that we're going to hit the, all those. One of the things I want to talk about are those four phases and when goalkeepers should start thinking that way. But let's start even earlier than that. When, and Mark, this goes, I'm going to put this to you. When do you see goalkeepers starting to understand the tactical elements of the game? And when should coaches look for goalkeepers to not only understand it, but be that leader on their team and communicate that? I mean, I'm going to jump off the back of Tim as well. Like, I think, I think if what an outsider, in my view of a goal, you know, the, the tactical stuff is that goalkeeper people kind of seem that all we do is just save the ball. You know, the game, the goalkeeper positions evolved so much now that you, I feel like the goal, the goalkeeper has to be very tactically astute of the game. You know, as a goalkeeper myself, one of my favorite things was learning all the tactics about the game. Um, now, going into the element of um, when to start, you know, for me, it's little stuff like, um, you know, like in a 1v1, or like, you know, for example, when the ball's up the field, where should the goalkeeper be? You see a lot of young goalkeepers will sit there on their line, you know, giving a high five to the crossbar. And it's that awareness of when do I come out of my box? When do I support my defence? And then they realise, because what happened when they're younger, a ball will come over top, a striker will run in, and they'll probably get beat because they're too defensive. Then they start to get a bit more tactically astute and they realise, OK, if I stand 10 yards further off my line, that same ball comes in, I'm out, and I clear my lines. You know, I think we all can agree that the goalkeeper now is becoming a sweeper-keeper. So initial tacticalness is how do I support my team and how do I position myself best? Guys, that's such a great point, Mark. And, and if I can just pop on the backside of that, I think the key word 
that I always use, and, and we talk about tactical awareness, but Mark, you, you hit it spot on. We're decision makers, right? And I think as decision makers, the word that I will use 1,000 times a, a session is how can we be proactive in that decision-making approach? So like you said, Mark, I think the difference between great goalkeepers and world-class goalkeepers is their ability to make decisions. And your ability to make decisions is based on how you can preemptively diffuse things before they even uh, cause problems. Because I, I tell our goalkeepers all the time, if we are making 10 saves a game, that, that, like, that's not a great performance from us. <laughs> like, how can we cut that down um, where, where our best games, I tell our goalkeepers all the time, is our best games are if we make zero saves because we've been so fantastic in the way that we've managed the game and have recognized tactical situations. I love that. I couldn't agree more with that right there, Tim. And I say that to my goalkeepers all the time. Can you be proactive? I love how you use that exact word because that is something that I, the word that I use all the time. But to, to be proactive, you need knowledge. And to have that knowledge and understand it, to be able to communicate that, you know, it takes a long time to get that understanding down. At what age should coaches start to really think about the goalkeeper's tactical awareness where they can become that leader and that communicator on the pitch? Yeah, I, I think it goes to principles. You know, I, I think it's understanding the higher level principles of the game, you know, what, what it will take when they're going to be 18, but also taking a, a step back and kind of peeling back the onion and saying, okay, I don't need to deal with tactical decision-making in wide play when they're 10, when they're never going to see a cross, right. right? So I think it's really for coaches and goalkeepers to think about what does my game look like? You know, so when I'm 10, you know, it's probably going to be fairly direct. I'm going to have to deal with the space behind the back line a little bit. I'm going to need to be a shot stopper and I'm going to have a fairly high level of distribution, but what distribution looks like for me when I'm 10 compared to what it looks like for me when I'm 18, let's hope at least are vastly different. Yeah. You know? So I, I think that's really kind of thinking about what does the game look like for that specific goalkeeper and not trying to, to go too complex in terms of the tactical element. I, I, I like that. And, and one thing I'm going to have up here is our tactical awareness slide that we will be referencing. Um, and here are some, some bubbles that kind of detail some of the elements that we're going to talk about. Now, based on, Tim, what you were saying, I'm going to actually direct this to Mark. Mark, are there certain elements that you would want to focus on earlier based on what Tim was just saying compared to their later stages of development? As in a sense of, from a leadership standpoint, just from it, from the, just from their tactical awareness and understanding. Well, I mean, like, it's, it's just great looking up. To be fair, like these slides are fantastic, and it's, it's always good to read these. I mean, I think one thing that just from looking at this slide, like the one thing that people jump over is free kicks and corners and how to make a wall. You know, one thing that I I'm, I'm going to go I'm going to reference a course I did with Tim actually, but the, what the, they did a bit about free kicks. And how to set up a free kick and the angles and i and i feel like it's for us coaches it's important to give the kids the tools on how to set up a free kick you know where do you put the wall because you, you know you guys see it you watch them at a young age and they're standing behind the wall all the players are shifted over to one side it's basically here you go guys you've got the whole goal to aim at you know can we teach them from a younger age how to how to set up a wall you know it's going to go from two-man wall to a four-man as they get older, but I think if we give them those basic principles, that's a great thing. And also feel like within our sessions, you know, becoming a leader and, you know, tactical stuff is, as you, you know, become, some of the stuff is ingrained in us as well. But I feel like from a leadership standpoint, I feel we can do that in our sessions to give the kids tools, like even basic stuff, like let make them say keepers at certain stages doing set in, in training sessions. Cause I always try to say, and I know you've been there as well, Eric, where if you do it in practice, it becomes second nature in the game. You know, and you, you, then you start to create that on-field persona that kind of you know, helps you with that leadership and tactical stuff as well. I believe communication has a huge piece to this because it's, it's not a lot of it has to do with understanding. But, but Mark, you just said it. And I, was, I, just, I just wrote it down. Leadership. You know, to be that leader, you need to communicate. And okay. to, so, go ahead, Mark. Go ahead. I'll let you sorry, do it. Sorry, jump in. There's, growing <laughs> up, I, there's two goalkeepers I used to like with David Seaman and Peter Schmeichel. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
But you analyze those two. They're two of the best goalkeepers, but they had two totally... And you put Edwin Van der Sar in there too. Different personalities. Schmeichel, in your face. He was a leader. He definitely communicated. There's no doubt about it. In your face, shouting at every single one. Whereas you had Seaman and Van der Sar, and they were a lot more chilled. But people, you know, just because they were chilled didn't mean they weren't communicating. They had a different way of doing things. I also feel like there's not one uh, blueprint of goalkeeper has to be X, Y, and Z. It's that own, that personal perception of how you do it. Bring out that personality. But as long as you're becoming that leader. Yeah, and Mark, you use that on the field persona line all the time. And I, I've been stealing that from me, just so you know. But I, I feel communication is a way for, you know, your team to be on the same page. But it also comes with confidence out of the goalkeeper to understand and recognize the situation to be able to effectively communicate what that goalkeeper might want during a certain situation in the game. Tim, how do you, how do you, how do you train that? Like how, do you, how do you coach a kid to get the confidence to be talking to their teammates when recognizing a situation on the field that they might be doing for the first or second time? Yeah, and I think that is, as coaches and as goalkeepers, we've got to understand that tactical awareness equals, like to get to where you want to go, there's going to be a lot of things that you wish you had back. <laughs> and, and I think the, the way that you're going to grow to be more tactically aware and a better decision maker ultimately is to, is to test failure a little bit and to push yourself outside your comfort zone. You know, and that starts with communication. And, and I think Mark's point is a great one. There's a, there's a certain level, like a base level of, um, outwardness that, that a goalkeeper has to have. Um, but every goalkeeper is different. Every goalkeeper is going to have a different comfort level. Um, but I also think it's important to, to train that goalkeeper in the team uh, with that as well and, and think about how they're going to communicate and why they're communicating and, and even developing a common language. You know, so I think for for a younger goalkeeper, there's kind of the simple keeper away, those sorts of things. But obviously that grows um, as, as you get a little bit older. But, um, you know, I, and I know we'll talk about a little bit about video later, but I think kind of walking goalkeepers through that and, and them answering the question of why, I, I think is the, the key element to tactical awareness of, okay, that just happened. Now, what am I going to do and why? You know, and I think for goalkeepers to constantly be asking themselves, okay, that was the decision I made. Why? And would I like to maybe make a different decision? Mm -hmm. um, but to constantly evaluate. Um, and, and I think for us as coaches and for goalkeepers to just be like, hey, we're, we're going to go try to get better today. And, and sometimes don't, those aren't always the most fun sessions. Yeah. I think that's the other thing about tactical awareness, right? Is is to understand that there's going to be some things that uh, sometimes they get a little bit worse before they get they get better. But to to grow as a goalkeeper, we got to push ourselves outside of our comfort zone. The hard part with that is confidence with the younger goalkeepers. And the reason I say that, I believe, is because if you mess up as a goalkeeper in front of your whole team, you're losing one nothing. Yep. A forward messes up in front of their whole team. It's just one bad shot. People don't even remember it 10 seconds later. Truth. So the, that, how do goalkeepers and how do coaches, uh, let me put it to the coach. How do coaches help alleviate that pressure with the okay. goalkeepers when that happens? Mark, go ahead. See, sorry, I'm, I'm a big component, especially the younger age. This is my, my philosophy is you go on a website, right? And if I typed in a certain age group and, they t and I said, what's the score? It would be Tim FC zero, Eric Wanderers nil. Now, what I mean by that, in theory, the scores should not count. You know, at a younger age, it should be an opportunity for players and goalkeepers alike to le learn to make, you have to make, you're going to make mistakes and there should be no consequence for a coach should realize, hey, don't worry about it. It's just, just keep going out there and you, you try again. So for example, just say like, you know, a goalkeeper comes off their line too high and they get lobbed, whatever it is. Okay, rather than, a and, I, and I've seen it, you see coach shouting at that goalkeeper. And do you know what happens in the next game? The goalie just sits back on his or her line. The fact. What it should be, a coach should, there should be something said at that moment, but after the game, it should be the arm around the shoulder type of style and say, hey, don't worry about it. 
keep doing it. You're going to learn what your zone is. You're going to learn. And then the next game, they might drop a little bit. They realize, and then the same ball comes in this time. They win it because they weren't so high up. Yeah. The coaches have to kind of have that, in my opinion, the development mentality. Two, two points to that and from me. One, goalkeeper coaches need to become part of the modern development. And what I mean by that is they can't just be going in the corner of a field, warming up the HGKs from all the different teams, and then wandering from goal to goal to goal and expect to be efficient and effective. It's, it's not going to be effective. You're not, you're not given enough time to work with the goalies on their development to recognize an error and then work with them while you're in the goal, talking about what could have happened, what should have happened, what could they do differently, and learn from that, as Tim mentioned earlier, that failure. Because goalkeeping is a lot of learning on the job. It's a lot of learning while you're failing. And then what would you do differently? That's, just, that's the job. And the other thing I love what Tim said, and I'm going to hold this up, I'm a huge fan of this stuff, the vocabulary that's needed. And it's not done. I, I am amazed that clubs do not have out a printed front and back. Here's what the basic terms are from our goalkeeper. Therefore, it's streamlined from one age to the next, one coach to the next. The goalkeepers are now confident what they're saying because they've been told what to say, right? Even when it comes to something like setting up a wall, like basic stuff that just doesn't get handed out or distributed. And now goalkeepers are wondering, like they go for a ball, and they're yelling mine. Well, we all know that they should be yelling keepers, but is that the true definition? Who's going to explain that to them? So I, I, have a tr I, I think the goalkeeper coaching position needs to be pushed a little further and given more responsibility at the local clubs um, compared to what I, what I see now. And, and Sorry, I'm, I'm going to jump on my soapbox, I guess the phrase is. But like a lot of clubs, in my opinion, aren't clubs. And I don't mean to be rude. It's a renter shirt. They wear the shirt. They don't have a philosophy. So it's very important that all clubs come together and have that some sort of philosophy as in the sense of, I know the club that I work for, you start off there and you work your way up to the top of the pyramid. Okay. And that, and there should be that cons consistency between each club, um, sorry, each age group, each team, male, female, what A and B teams, it should all be the same thing. You should be able to, in theory, your team should be able to have a penny on and you should know what that team is. And it, same for a goalkeeper. The goalie should not have, you could have, they could have a penny on, but you're like, okay, I know who he is because that's the way that, club is and that's how they want their goalkeepers to be you know it's like you know back home in England the professional teams you know they all come up through that system and they all learn you know you, know, you always hear the Liverpool way and you always know a kid that's grown up through the Liverpool system because they've always had that type of philosophy it's the same you know over here they need to start bringing those sort of mentalities and having those key phrases like you said and goalie coaches shouldn't be just you know an hour a week or whatever it is less than that doing a session and there's no real oh, okay we're, you know we're doing a session you should be there all the time down the field and even if you can't be physically every game, I know we're going to talk about video analysis and I know that we use it. You can video games, you can watch those games and then you can instantly give kids feedback as well. Let's get you into video. Be there. Let's get into video analysis. We've mentioned a few times already. Um, Tim, talk to me about video analysis, not only at the Penn state level and at the higher national levels, but also like when kids are teens. Well, one thing I say to my own two boys, as well as all those I coach, have you watched any soccer this week? Or because I feel that just by watching the game, kids are going to see things differently, and they're going to see like they're going to recognize an in swinger versus an out swinger, where they might not even know what that is because kids at their age don't know how to do that or hit that service. Tim, when do you start with your video analysis? When do you start to become? When's that start to become part of your development? Yeah, and if I can go back on on Mark's point a little bit, I think one of the things that you said early, Eric, is. The position has changed 100%. Tremendously. I think in a lot of places, the coaching of goalkeepers hasn't necessarily changed. So, like, this is, this is a soapbox, right? Like, I need to, I need to say this, right? Oh, Tim, we, I am clapping. Go. <laughs> like, the team training then needs to change, right? And there needs to, like, for goalkeeper coaches, there has to be an open line of communication of how that goalkeeper trains within the team. Because we all know it as goalkeeper coaches. Goalkeepers see it, right? On game day, right? We get the glare, like down the bench. I'm fortunate. I don't, I don't get that at Penn State. My, my head coach is brilliant. But I, think, I know so many coaches that go through that. But they're upset about things that you haven't trained through the week. So all of a sudden, like, how can you be upset if you haven't trained it through the week? And I think it's, it's up to goalkeepers as well to really think about things they're struggling with and talking about how they can tame it train them in team context. Let's dive into that. 
how do we do that? Yeah. So, I mean, I think the goalkeeper's vocabulary is such a great one, right? Because how many goalkeepers get time with their back four specifically in training in a week across the country? Like I, my perception is that that's really, really low, really low, right? Because even if they play small sided or whatever, do they have their entire back four? Do they have just one center back? Do those center backs know how to work within each other? Um, those sorts of things are huge. Um, so I think vocab for sure. I think for so much of like, we just talk about the terminology when we're out of possession, right? Defending the goal, defending the area, defending the space. I don't feel like goalkeepers in a training session defend the space very frequently. Or, or there's even exercises related to how do we defend that space as a team and the goalkeeper's role within that. All right. It's a lot of the goalkeeper defending the goal. When the goalkeeper doesn't do well defending the goal, then we look at the goalkeeper coach. Yep. It's always a negative. It's always when, when something goes wrong, that's when we look at it. And yeah. I, I think the pro, being proactive, Tim you used that word earlier, Tim, and I, I love it, man. I use it all the time. It's can we be proactive to educate the kids or the goalkeepers, excuse me, so when the situation arrives in a game, they're prepared for it. I mean, I think it's that simple. I know a lot of people don't, but I believe it's to be that simple. Well, you know, and I think the, that's hard. (laughs) Why, why don't, why don't we incorporate goalkeepers into team training? Because most, most coaches weren't goalkeepers. Right. And so it's challenging of of how do we integrate them in in the right way to, to, to help them relate to the team. You know, often they're plus players or they're at an end, you come a ball into their hands or they're, you know, they're, they're linking play in a rondo or something. Um, but, but I think that's really important. I could go on a long soapbox there, but. <laughs> well, let's go with it. Let's, we talked about the modern game and how the position is changing. Let's yeah. real quickly hit a couple bullet points. How's the game changing for goalkeepers? Mark, let me start with well, you. I, I mean, I mean, the big thing is, is um, using your feet. Like, you, you know, Gone and there's always this analysis about Peter Schmeichel. How would he be in the game today? Because he wasn't. If people say he wasn't great with his feet, that that's it. Once a huge thing now. It's a way. It's a different way of cha- training the kids as well. It's not just about saving the ball and etc. That the basic, the bread and butter. You now have to be good with your feet. You have to be a sweeper keeper. I mean, you know, a couple of year, few years back, it didn't matter how good your kicking was. But now, if you look at it, what does everyone speak about? Edison, his kicking, Allison. You know, Manuel Neuer, when he, you know, geez, when he was coming off his line, heading the ball, it's, that part of the game for me is is, is changing so much. And you know, just jump on a, a, you know, like a training element. We goalie coaches have to give the goal players tools to succeed in a team environment of putting them, putting them in those sort of game situations. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Are like you going to meet those sort of elements? Balls over the top, how do you deal with it? And yeah, definitely playing with your feet is huge right now. For me, that's massive. Tim, go ahead. I thought. Yeah, I mean, I th- I think we know the the pure like stats piece of it is at least over sixty five percent of your touches in a match are gonna not be with your hands, right? And and what I always say is like, does your training look like that? Now I'm not saying we should spend more than sixty five percent of the time because those actions with our hands are crucial. They they win games for you, right? So we need to be good in those moments. But uh, I think that's huge. Um, but we know that everybody wants to press high now, right? But that demands then that the goalkeeper manages the space. Because if you're going to press high, you're going to not press high well at least once in a match, right? So how do you kind of manage that broken press? And then the other thing I think that's huge right now in terms of like a tactical trend and how the game's changing is wide service. You know, I think we used to watch the Premier League from the 90s and it was get it wide and toss it in the mixer right? And balls were floated in and the service looks completely different, but you watch any high level game now and wide service is all cutbacks on the floor, whipped and driven, a ball floated in, um, you know, so I think teaching goalkeepers on how to manage with, with wide service in the modern game is really important. Yeah. So the, the game evolves so much all the time and it just creates so many different elements for the goalkeeper now as well. It's, it's crazy how much is changing. 
I think that supports our, to our conversation point regarding like the reason we're talking about how the game is changing and the modern goalkeeper is now, or I'm sorry, the modern game, the goalkeeper is evolving with that. Tim, I think you mentioned it earlier, the coach has to evolve too. And if, and if the goalkeeper coaches aren't involved, aren't evolving with the times and the changing of, of the guard, so to speak, of how the goalkeeper is now utilized in a game, they're going to be left behind. Those teams are going to just – you're going to see them deteriorate in the back, and it's going to be more of that direct service up the field based on their training environment. Absolutely. And I see that happening at the youngest levels right now. I really – I do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Video analysis. I want to jump back on that. Um, okay. Mark, do you guys use video analysis in your club? Do you use it at uh, New in, Kensington? In, What's the in, role? How do you do it? Yeah, in, in the club, it, all of our games are filmed. All of our games are filmed and they're up, uploaded pretty much straight away. So you can jump on there. And the good thing about that is you can watch the game. You can freeze it. Say it's the 19 minute 35 and it'd be like, you know, Eric took two touches rather than whatever. Eric takes two touches rather than one. You make a little note of it. But then you can also send that clip to you and you can see it as well. So you kind of break it all down, you know, positive, negative. You can send all those sort of clips. Um, also, from a Penn State, from, from a new Ken situation as well, I video most of the games and I will have video sessions with the guys and break the video down. And I, I think I'm a big component of video analysis. I think sometimes if I talk to you, it's one thing. If I say, hey, Eric, 15 minutes, 35 seconds, look at this. Oh, yeah. My hands were like this. I was slightly to my left. Oh, I can't hide from it now because I've just seen the video. So I think video analysis is huge. I love it. Tim, do you, do you utilize um, video analysis with your training sessions? Absolutely. Um, you know, I think there's, you know, I think kind of like the way I think about with session design or, or, or kind of like how we create sessions for goalkeepers and how goalkeepers look at their sessions is the technical elements right and there's so much technical work that we do on a daily basis and then you kind of got your functional work that you'll do that can kind of reinforce your principles and then you got like the more complex stuff where you're making decisions um and i think there's so many amazing things that you can do in each one of those so like mark said you can talk about hand position or balance or weight or whatever if that's from a pure technical perspective but then you can kind of talk about okay how was your prep touch and how did it, why was it that length due to what you read from the other team? You know, so I think that's all like we use key performance indicators. So we'll look at all kind of link our video back to our principles. So great in our match, you know, when we talk about um, we wanted to, you know, you kind of look at that play into around kind of those areas of with the ball. So we'll look at your percentages in all those areas, right? And we'll kind of look at, okay, great. In this match, you were seven out of eight playing into. Why was that? Let's go look back and, and see what contributed to that. And so I think the what I try to do most in video is I don't talk. <laughs> like, I, I think that's the best way. I think we want to talk all the time. Like, I'll just constantly pause it and ask the goalkeeper to give me information. Hey, what do you think here? And, and then it's a really good way for us to kind of assess what they're considering rather than us just speaking at them. You know, so I'll kind of let them give an answer and then I'll maybe go, okay, why? And then they'll give me a little bit of an answer and then I'll go, okay, why? Right? And I like, I think the best question we can ask as coaches is why? Because now you're actually asking the goalkeeper to think about tactically, why are they doing what they're doing, right? And, and hopefully they walk away and go, wow. Because I, I always say, you can have your brains on the field or on the sidelines, <laughs> right. right? But like, we, we aren't gonna win games. Um, we need our goalkeepers to win games. So how do we empower them to be the decision maker? The way that we're going to empower them is for them to understand. And that's through principles and them understanding why. And I think the best way, video is an incredible tool because what they do in their mind's eye and what they're actually doing sometimes are are vastly different. Um, But the way we create that is for them to watch it and for them to have the answers. Right? I think the the evolution of a goalkeeper is us talking about uh, areas in which they can be better and them 
then them knowing areas and you know where like they'll self they'll like they'll self coach and I tell our, like our goalkeepers in their fourth fifth year maybe third year uh, if I'm coaching you too much that that's probably like we need to get to a point where you're coaching yourself right because like in a training session I'll I'll just say what do you think or like now they'll like as a goalkeeper gets older I won't even have to ask them they'll look at me and be like oh, I should have done this stuff yep perfect yep we're good it, like that's that, that's awesome like that makes me the happiest it, coach ever Tim I, I'm a big fan of life lessons when it comes to coaching in general and I feel you can learn a lot on the pitch I truly do and I think what you just described is someone having the ability to self-analyze change their behavior for the better and that can be in anything a relationship on the field in a business setting doesn't matter I, I think what you just said is is one of the most crucial life lessons that any any goalkeeper or kid or student could could ask for. Yeah. Um, the other thing I'm going to mention real something one real quick, and then I'm going to get back to you for conclusion. We have about two minutes left. But one thing I'm going to say too is, in my experience, I always come across in my college experiences with coaching, the goalkeepers haven't really experienced video analysis, not to the not to the degree that we utilize it in college game. Mm -hmm. And I feel that if there's one thing clubs could do more of. It's video analysis to prepare their kids or those that are going on. Because in D1, it, it's all the time. Like we look at video game video from a training perspective. It's constant looking at your opponent. I mean, you're always looking for that extra edge. How do you get that? You know, and I, I feel that if there's one thing kids could do more of, it's be a fan of the game and video analysis. Yeah. Mark, you have about 30 seconds, sir. This went by way too quickly, but I do want to ask you for your Last um, comments, if you can, please, on tactical awareness. Yeah, just to quick, just say the game's evolving. Us as goalkeepers, us as goalie coaches have to constantly evolve with it. Right now, just from a basic standpoint, learn, you know, learn to become a, try to be a leader. And basic starting point is starting position. When your team's on the attack, where do you stand? And then as the ball comes closer, where do you move? Cool. Just real basic things to start with. Thank you. Tim, I'm going to end, end with you, if I can, please. Final words. Yeah. I think with tactical awareness, like – we want to make goalkeepers fall in love with the position. Don't overcomplicate it, right? Like think about how we're going to train tactical awareness, both as a goalkeeper and a coach and like make it super fun, create environments where it's super fun and failure is a good thing. Mm -hmm. I love the failure piece. I say it all the time. I want you to fail right now. I want you to fail. <laughs> Go get out of your comfort zone. And, and yeah. then you like, you'll see goalkeepers, do things they never thought they were capable of. Exactly. And they'll learn from it. And it's great. It's great. Always, always keep an open mind. You're always learning. Yeah. yeah. Guys, I, this went by, I may mean it way too quickly. I appreciate both of you and thank you very much for being on it. For everybody else, thank you for tuning in. Please stay tuned for our next episode. Have a great day.